Hey everyone, welcome to D3 in 10 minutes or less. I am Jasper and today we are going to do some fun stuff. That's right, some fun stuff. Mainly refactoring a web application so that it works better for D3. Uh, you might have uh, inclinations, dreams to build D3 into web apps. You might have a web app that you want to incorporate D3 into. In either of those instances, you're coming to the same sort of confluence point of like having a web application that lives and breathes and plays nicely with D3. So that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, without any uh, further jibber jabber, and let's, uh, let's get right into it. Okay, so let's just start off by taking a look at the uh, package log so we can see what's what's changed here. So you can see we've added in a couple new uh, packages from D3, specifically array and shape. What array is gonna help us do is manipulate data objects, which is always fun, and shape is gonna help us draw lines. Uh, let's see there, we've also bring in the, we're also bringing the types because TypeScript is your friend and that's that for package log so those are the new things we've brought in i've also made some changes to the structure uh done some refactoring so that stuff's a bit easier to uh, parse and use in, in different files i won't get into the details there you can see it all in the diff within github if you're really into that kind of thing uh, i've changed the styling too remember it was dark now it's light so I'll just flip that around um but that's not what you're here for what you're here for to actually see some D3 and React working together. So let's get into it. So right now we've just got this one kind of static bars component. So uh, within a dashboard, what you want, or with a web application that uses D3, you want to balance between uh, reusability and kind of tailored design, right? So if you go too hard in either direction, you're gonna you're gonna lose out on some. Uh, just some benefits so if we kind of go down in the middle what we're going to do is instead of having just a bars component we're going to have a uh, pop bars so it's pop possibility of precipitation because that's what we're measuring right here this is for me here in oregon so you can see over the next couple hours pretty high chance of precipitation um maybe the numbers aren't valued so all right so we'll see that um so i'm just going to go here create a new pop bars.tsx and what this is going to allow me to do is to pass in some styles so that I don't have to stay so generic here. So let's just copy bars here. So instead of having the domain be just the extent where it's generic because you want to be sure you're capturing everything, we know the possibility of precipitation will always be between 0% and 100%. So what we can do here then is just do the domain of 0 to 1. So that will help us kind of normalize and see what it is here. So looks like oh, well, npm run start. That should help solve it. Okay, cool. So it looks like we were already pretty much at a hundred percent. Just to see what it looks like if we change it there. I got a two. Let's reload this. Oh, you know what's happening. Yep, yep, yep. Cool. Don't forget to. Debug mode. There we go. Ta -da. Uh, so, still bringing bars, but let's change this to pop bars. Add that import, save it. Found one error, cannot find module. So, I go up here, that, components. There we go, cool, okay. So when we change the range to 100%, which is what this is at now, there, you can see it's actually not looking so bad for rain in Portland. It's springtime after all, so likely to rain. I'm seeing some rain on my window, but not 100%. Anyway, so that's possibility of precipitation bars. Uh, the other thing we wanna do is we wanna see the temperature and how that's trending over the next 48 hours. So I'll just go in here again, let's do, templine.tsx. Okay, so we can copy a lot of this stuff over again, just because it gives us that main scaffolding. Uh, we'll have to get a little bit more creative when we, let's 
see. So I'm going to bring a line from D3 shape. There we go. Let's go. So one thing we are doing to keep things generic is we're passing, we have these same sort of props, chart props. We can reuse that over and over across all the different charts. What this will allow us to do in turn is not have to reinvent the wheel every single time we create a new chart. Uh, this also allows us to keep a lot of the scaffolding the same, which is real nice. Change a couple things here. So we're gonna domain. So this is where we can use D3 extent. So I'm just gonna go to D dot date. Why is it barking? Uh, undefined. All right, so we'll leave that. Say, hey, this could be undefined, but we know it won't be. Okay, um, and then here. Let's, oh, you know what we can do actually? Just do as. Before we go any further, let's bring this sucker in um, just so that we know it's rendering correctly. So we have pop bars there. What is it? Temp line. So again, this is one of the joys of using React with D3 is you can you can copy stuff over pretty easily. It's all because React is all built around designing the, the UI and really thinking from the user experience downwards, uh, it helps you when you're doing front-end development, specifically around data visualization, because you can think about how things are built in a concept of components, as opposed to thinking around like functions and how they all map against each other. This helps you think about the actual objects, kind of the blocks that your users will interact with. So here you can see I've got a header with the bars in the line, right? So that's really how we're thinking about this. It's one of the reasons I like React. Some people don't like it because they come from sort of a functional programming standpoint. React can be thought of as functional. Actually, probably is by most people. I think of React as kind of its own thing. That might be wrong. Um, if I am, that's okay. Okay, so getting some errors here. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Okay. So here we are at last. A equals pop data. Actions equals dimensions. Okay. So we've got a line. That's great. Uh, the problem is it's not scaling correctly. So what's happening is, oh, the Y scale. Maybe, there we go, cool, okay. So that's great. Uh, the challenge now is that these aren't overlaid on top of one another, right? So it's kind of tough to see like what's actually going on here. So what we'll do is go back here to main. Hmm, what can we do here, folks? These are rendered differently. I don't know what we can do. Let's create another container. Let's create another chart that is a uh, parent chart. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna save that for next time. That'll be in the next video. That'll be next week that you'll see. Uh, what we did go over today, just to recap, is how to build out specific, well, first off, we spent a lot of time debugging, so thanks for sticking through it. Uh, but also how to pass data down through um, from, 
from the top to different objects, how to refactor and structure things within your web application to be more D3 friendly, and also how to uh, do, a, do a line here. So again, uh, thanks for hanging out. Uh, we'll catch you next week.